Adobe, please fix Lightroom. You keep releasing new updates and you keep not fixing all these obvious things that are super broken. Here's 18 major problems with Adobe Lightroom. First and foremost, it's slow. It's really slow and it's unnecessarily slow. The biggest problem is it's not multi-threaded. Most processors nowadays, most computers can do like 20 things at once. But Adobe insists on doing one thing at a time. It's like if you had to bring in groceries from the car and you brought one bag in at a time. No, that's shameful. All of us know you bring in all the groceries all at once, even if you have to like hang them around your neck and all your arms. That's because we do more than one thing at a time, but Lightroom doesn't. Look at your processor utilization when you're doing something like importing pictures and you'll see it's not at 100%. It's at like 12%. Adobe, make your app multi-threaded. I've read stuff by your developers that say that to do this, they'd have to go back and re-architect the way Lightroom works. It's, it's time. <laughs> do that. Start from scratch. I've used Capture One. It's super fast. I know it can be done. Also, you added background tasks in the in Lightroom 6. So, you know, when you import pictures, it shows up in that that upper left corner up there, you know, up here when you're importing stuff, but you can't control them. That's that's good that we can now see those tasks, but I want to be able to pause a task or reorder the task because tasks have different priorities. They uh, give me some control. <laughs> also, you can't export 4K videos. You did this thing where you gave Lightroom a little bit of video capabilities, but then you just kind of left it. Like you can import videos and you can see them, but you can't really do much editing with them. But still, you can only export them to 1080p. You can import 4K videos, they'll play. But if you want to export them, it's at 1080p. Why, why do you bring these features in and then just abandon them? The world has moved on from 1080 the entire book module <laughs> is, is, it's lousy. Okay, photo books are useful. People make photo books, especially professionals, but your module is absolutely useless. Not only is the user interface just archaic and painful, but you can only actually print them at a single photo service blurb. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that Adobe has some deal with blurb where they get a cut of it. Guess what? Blurb, I tested them. Blurb is more expensive than other options and a little bit lower quality. But not only that, but you can go to other places that make photo books and their their websites, their web interfaces are far nicer to use than the terrible book module. So so I you know what I tell people? I wrote a book on Lightroom, but I had to tell people don't ever use the book module. Just go to one of these websites and get your books printed. But why is it there? It could be useful. The print module, I, I do actually use the print module, and there are times when you need to use the print module, like if you want to make a, a little setup, but it's incredibly difficult to use, and I'm somebody who teaches Lightroom. So yeah, you can do things like this, but it, it just needs a huge user interface overhaul. It doesn't integrate that well with printers. It's really difficult and kind of clumsy to get your printer set up for the right quality. Uh, it's just have somebody experienced in GUIs take a look at it and try to go through the major tasks and see where users stumble. It needs to be overhauled. The slideshow module just needs to completely go away. And I just tell people, because you can turn these off, I tell people to go in there and just turn off the heading because the slideshow module is so bad. Even if for some reason you really wanted to show a slideshow, people don't really do slideshows anymore. Sometimes you want to like show a client a set of pictures and this is the way to do it. You just flip through it like this. But let's say you were to try to use the slideshow module. Watch what happens when I actually hit play down here. First it's got to like preview it and then it finally starts up and then it, it does this thing and oh, it's just incredibly clumsy. It's not the way things work. You could theoretically export it, but then again, you'd be limited to 1080p. <laughs> the slideshow module. All this is way better than the web module. Now, keep in mind, I've now complained about four out of seven of the modules in Lightroom. These are so antiquated, but check out the website you can make with the Adobe Lightroom <laughs> web module. Oh, click next. <laughs> this is going to be great. This makes my pictures look so nice. Oh, Tony's pictures. <laughs> oh my God. Is the web module so 
1998 <laughs> with these next buttons down here. I, oh my God. I mean, oh, this looks great. I seriously <laughs> either make something that's actually useful for sharing images on the web or pull it out completely. You know what I actually do is I export pictures to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and and kind of technically there are plugins that you can do, but they they don't work very well. You can't like tag people on Facebook what you want to do. So you can just end up exporting them as JPEGs and then going to the website. But the web module is just a shameful embarrassment that is so outdated. You don't want anybody to ever go to it. At least hide the module heading in the future. The entire folders panel needs to be redone. So the thing about Lightroom is it imports your pictures. They stay on your disk. It reads them all into a catalog and it knows where they live. And if you go over in the, the grid view here, you'll see the folders module. It shows you where all the folders are. Um, if, for example, you work with multiple drives like I do, I have a fast C drive and then I have a D drive, which is big and slow, and I'm moving pictures all the time between these folders. It's it's really challenging to get a group of, of pictures moved from one folder to the other because um, you have to do this like drag and drop thing and you kind of have to scroll down like this. The interface is just really clumsy. But there's also one huge problem. If if there's already a folder with the same file name, if, for example, you're dragging this 2015-08-14 date to another 2015 folder and that exists, the folders module won't merge your pictures for you. You know what it does? It just uh, says that folder already exists and then it doesn't copy it. So at that point, you have to try to rename the folder and then move it, but the folders are named for dates, so it doesn't make any sense to be re Give me the option to merge folders and just give me generally a better user interface. And what's more, if I do move pictures outside of Lightroom, Lightroom just marks the picture as missing. And you can click a button and then go find that individual picture, but all Lightroom will do is allow you to find nearby pictures, which means pictures in the same folder. God forbid you move an entire, like all of 2015, which might have a hundred different subfolders, you would have to go through and find one picture in every one of those date subfolders and then find the new folder. It's, it's impossible and terrifying. And all you have to do is accidentally move or rename a folder, tasks that we do all the time, change a drive letter. That would screw up Lightroom and you'd have to go through and manually find every folder. Fix the folders panel and give me a tool that at least will automatically search the disk and find missing files for me automatically. Focal lengths. Lightroom deals with focal lengths in the most just literal way. So you can go to the metadata panel here and browse through. You can make this find your focal lengths. And sometimes I want to actually go in and just find all my wide angle shots or all my telephoto shots. The focal length thing would be useful, except it lists the absolute focal length rather than the equivalent focal length. So sometimes I shoot full frame. Sometimes I shoot with a CX camera that has like a 3X crop. If I search for 16 millimeter pictures, that's going to be super wide angle on my full frame cameras or moderately telephoto on my CX cameras. Give me the option for equivalent focal length for those of us who use cameras with different size sensors. Um, I love the photo merge tools, HDR and panoramas, terribly useful, but uh, they, they work 80% of the time. Great. 20% of the time I get an, an error, just an error. And there's nothing. It doesn't give you any information. It doesn't say picture four or five is a problem. This picture is a problem. There's no troubleshooting. No, it just, it just fails. And then I don't know what to do. Sometimes I try to merge fewer pictures and try it again and it fails again. But you know what does work is I can pull it into a different app. I could pull my panoramas into Microsoft Ice. I could pull my HDR pictures into Photomatix. They work perfectly every time with no errors. So I know Lightroom could work around it. So fix the bugs in Photo Merge or at least give me more meaningful errors, but try to make the app a little more resilient. New camera updates are, the way you handle them are so annoying. Every time there's a new camera, Lightroom refuses to process the raw files until you release 
a, an update, like the update from 2015.5 to 2015.6, and then users have to install this big update, which updates the entire app just to read the raw files from the images. Um, this causes problems in a couple of ways. First, you get a new camera and you can't read the raw files. And it's completely unnecessary because most of the time the raw file format doesn't actually change. When Adobe released, when, when Sony released the A6300, the raw file format was completely unchanged from their other cameras. So all the logic was in Lightroom. It's just that Lightroom saw in the metadata of the file that it was from a camera it didn't recognize and it refused to even try. So all you needed to do, to do was to tell Lightroom to use that same old Sony RAW file processing for this new camera. It could have pulled that information from a web service like, hey, I don't recognize this camera. Can I use one of my existing uh, algorithms? Or you could issue a little text file that just says the A6300 is the same as the A6000. No, you have to wait. Users have to wait for a full update. This also screws people who buy the full version of Lightroom, like Lightroom 5 or Lightroom 6, because you know at some point they're going to buy a new camera and then they won't be able to import RAW files. They'll have to go through like Adobe Camera RAW, which is a total pain. And that, that's part of why I hate this, because I think it's part of your plan to get everybody using Adobe CC, but not everybody wants to pay that monthly fee. It's, it's unnecessarily expensive just to get update your app to do the exact same thing it's doing, but with files that have a slightly different bit of metadata in them. It's, it's annoying. Audio file support. Cameras like the 1DX and the Nikon D4, D5, they have microphones in them so you can record little vocal clips. You can talk about a picture that would be useful to pass on to an editor or something, but Lightroom is useless with these. Technically, you can go into Lightroom and look at the metadata. It'll be down here in the metadata, and there'll be a little icon that shows that there's an audio file attached. But there's no icon in the grid view. There could be a little microphone icon that says, hey, there's sound here. And to play it is, is really difficult and a pain. Also, there's just a flat out bug. If you import pictures from a memory card and they have audio files, Lightroom completely disregards it. It doesn't even import them. What you have to do is you have to copy the files from the camera to a local hard disk and then import them from the hard disk. And then you'll find those audio files. So I know not many people use the audio files but some of us would like to fix those bugs and make it a little more useful because the real pros will use this. And right now it kind of makes the feature in the camera useless because it doesn't work in, in our actual workflow. You introduced face recognition and really talked up how useful face recognition would be in tagging all your pictures. In theory, it should go through my entire catalog and learn to recognize my daughter's face and then tag all the pictures. It works appallingly. It does a terrible, terrible job at face recognition. And I know we should be astound, astounded at artificial intelligence and face recognition. And I am when I, Facebook is creepy at how good it is at recognizing faces. Google has awesome face recognition. Adobe, your face recognition is useless. It's not good enough to be useful. I just tell people don't bother using it. So if you're going to release a feature like that and market it and use it to sell a version of Lightroom, it should at least be functional. It's not. The Lightroom mobile syncing, this is a more of a small nitpick, but you let me install Lightroom on one desktop and one laptop. That's the license agreement. And that's great because I'm one user. And when I travel, I grab my laptop, but at home I use my desktop. But only one of those two computers can sync to Lightroom mobile, <laughs> which this doesn't make any sense because it's Lightroom mobile and I'm a mobile user. Now that means I can sync from my computer, my desktop to my phone. But then when I'm traveling and I grab my lap laptop and I want to sync stuff to my laptop or from my laptop to my phone, I, I have to like sign out of my desktop and it, it just doesn't make any sense. Allow me to at least sync my two computers to Lightroom mobile. Another problem is network catalogs. We work as a team. There's multiple people here who each take turns at separate pictures. And a lot of photography studios have separate people who photograph the pictures, who edit them, who tag them with metadata, who actually sell them to the end users. These people have separate computers. We'd like to be able to share a single catalog with files across our high-speed network. The network is plenty fast enough to do this in an efficient way, but you don't provide any way to do that. So you know what we end up doing? Either we take an external hard drive and we keep the files, the pictures, and the catalog on there, and then we physically pass it from person to person and import it, 
or we have to be exporting catalogs and syncing them up with pictures whenever we make changes to the metadata or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. This is such like a 1990s way to do things. Check out Google Apps and the way multiple people can work in a single document at the same time. We really need to be able to have the same catalog open on different computers. It'd make a huge difference in our workflow. Tethering in Lightroom is unbearably slow, especially as megapixels have increased in cameras. It's basically unusable with a 36 megapixel D810 and completely unusable with a 50 megapixel 5 DSR. Now they have USB 3, They're, they can be plenty fast enough. I know this because we have Capture One installed in the studio. Yes, I have to actually buy a separate app that costs more than Lightroom and use it just for my computer in the studio for the purpose of tethering because Lightroom is so unbearably slow. We're talking like 10, 15 seconds on a very fast computer to have a picture I just took actually appear and be able to check it at one-to-one -to, -one to see if everything is sharp. Whereas Capture One, it happens like less than a second. It pops up right away. Work on this. The tethering is important and useful for those of us actually shooting in a studio environment. It's a key part of your app and it's unbearable. Why, why do you make features that are for your, well, I know why. There are a lot of features that if you bought Lightroom 6, you don't get access to, like the new uh, upright distortion fixing feature that you released in, in Lightroom 2015.6, Lightroom 6.6 .6 doesn't have it. So if you bought Lightroom outright, you just don't get these new features. It's a little incremental improvement. I know why you want people to pay 10 bucks a month instead of buying it outright, because that might be cheaper for them and you want that steady source of income. So your revenue is not going up and down, blah, blah, blah. Stop busting our balls if we don't want to pay monthly. Give those guys a fair set of features. And frankly, Lightroom CC, the creative cloud, is a pain in the ass to use, especially if you travel. Twice now, I've grabbed my laptop and hopped on a plane hoping to get some work done and gone to open Lightroom or gone to open Premiere and it won't launch because it wants me to log in. But guess what? I can't reach the internet from the airplane and I'm a paid user. I pay, we pay like over 250 bucks a month to Adobe. And on these long stretches of airplane flights, I haven't been able to get any work done because you require a stupid login. I know you're trying to prevent piracy and that that's important to you, but I'm a paid customer. Figure out a way that I can do this. And I, I know I could go in and make sure I can log in beforehand before I leave, but I, I forget. I just, I just grab my laptop and go and, and God forbid, I should assume that my apps should work while I'm traveling. You need to back up the catalog for Lightroom. It's very important to have a backup of it. And when you close Lightroom, if you haven't backed up in a while, it'll by default ask you if you want to back up. But it, it does it when you go to close Lightroom. And I'm a photographer. I leave Lightroom open all the time unless I need to update Lightroom or unless I need to restart my computer. That's, those are the times I close Lightroom. And when I'm doing those things, I do not feel like waiting 10 minutes to actually close Lightroom. Asking me to do a backup when I'm closing Lightroom is the worst possible time for me to do a backup. How about you just automatically run the backup when I'm sleeping or not using the computer? That's when every backup in the world runs. To interrupt me closing the app, to literally, it takes 10 minutes to back up my catalog. What terrible timing. Just run it in the background, for God's sakes. If you actually want to learn more about Lightroom, I have a whole book about it. That's why I have so many things that I hate about Lightroom, because I love Lightroom. It's a great app. I still think it's the best app for this stuff. I've tried Capture One. I've tried these other apps. Lightroom overall is still the best app for me. But there were so many things that just drive me crazy about it. It's, it's like a love-hate relationship. Anyway, I have books on Lightroom 5 and Lightroom 6 slash CC. They include tons of free video training, over 14 hours. They include over 250 presets. I know you're thinking that must cost like 300 bucks because <laughs> you've seen what other people charge for video training and presets. No, the ebook is 10 bucks and includes all that stuff as well as free updates when Adobe does release uh, Lightroom CC updates. You can get the paperback. It's like 25 bucks. Go to sdp.io slash store to order from just us directly with the worldwide shipping or just check Amazon. Amazon and most bookstores can, can get it for you, but Amazon has reviews and stuff. Thank you. Subscribe for more Lightroom tips. And just thanks for, for listening to me, Vent. I feel like this has been therapeutic. I, I feel better about Lightroom. Lightroom, I love you. Bye.